continue the sensor sweep. We need to find out where that energy surge came from. Acknowledged, Professor. This may take several hours. There's a lot of land to cover. True. The world is a big place. Home to people of many diverse cultures, belief systems, and even different opinions on morality. Lots of different opinions on what is or is not appropriate, and what is or is not a good game. Professor, why do some game companies buy positive game reviews, rather than allowing honest reviews so gamers can make their own informed decisions? Excellent question. There's more than one answer to the question. I've talked about this before, how the biggest game studios are run by people with no prior experience in making video games. Executives who come from completely different industries. They bring with them a very different corporate mindset. They might have worked in corporations like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and etc. It doesn't work well in the video game industry though. Games aren't commodity like soda and potato chips. They are an art form. Art isn't made by committee, nor it is made by assembly line. That's why the annual franchise model is dying. Precisely. I think at some level the executives know this. Yet many stay the course, they know they have fanatically loyal fans. Loyalty so strong, it becomes self-destructive. They've been called a lot of derogatory names, but we simply call them fanboys. Fanboys are easy to exploit, and no matter how often they're taken advantage of they stay religiously fanatical. But, they are the minority. They are a small group in the gaming community, but they're one of the loudest. Imposing review embargoes until launch day, or paying YouTubers for positive reviews isn't meant to influence them. Those tactics are aimed at the rest of the gaming community. Statistically speaking, the average gamer is smart and well-educated. Yet, they're human beings with emotions. And as emotional beings we can often find out ourselves easily caught up in hype. Game companies often use basic psychology when making trailers and ads. They'll use emotionally rousing music, images which confer strong feelings, and so on and so forth. These, of course, often don't reflect what the game really is like, but what the companies want gamers to think the game is like. They spend tens of thousands, even millions, on ad campaigns aimed at creating this impression of what the game will be like when it launches. Review copies are sent out, but to prevent reviews good or bad from impacting possible sales an embargo is placed on when reviews can be released. Often, this is on or after the day the game is released. And, then, you have instances where reviews are released ahead of the launch but the game companies pay to make them positive to drum up sales. None of this is meant to target the fanatically loyal. They're going to buy the games no matter what. These tactics are targeted at the rest of us. But, what they don't understand is that we're onto them. They underestimated our intelligence. We have been burned one too many times, and now we approach games with a kind of hype machine behind it with intense cynicism. And, in the case of Infinite Warfare, outright hatred. Basically, the average gamer is tired of being treated like they are stupid. Precisely. All of this stems from the corporate mentality I spoke of. It works to sell potato chips and pop, but doesn't work anymore to sell video games. This is why annual franchises are dying. Why there is so much hate for Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Why EA is praise for Battlefield 1's radical switch from the modern day warfare setting to World War 1. And, why we aren't getting a new Assassin's Creed game this year, and maybe not next year either. Some companies get it, they realize that the business model of annual franchises is doing more harm than good. Not just to their fans, but to themselves even more so. Real damage has been done to the Assassin's Creed brand, and Ubisoft understands this. Electronic Arts looks like they are trying. Battlefield Frontlines was a token effort, but this new move to World War I is a bold step in a different direction. It will be different from the modern military fair Battlefield has embraced for many years now. The era of World War I was a different time, with different attitudes. Before the Great War our political thinking was still heavily influenced by medieval sensitivities. World War I changed everything. Attitudes were different, 
society was different. We were very politically naive. The Great War was a tragedy on a scale never before experienced by humanity. So, it's a rather bold step for EA to go back to such a pinnacle moment in history. To a war which literally reshaped the world, and still affects us today. This doesn't make up for the wrongs the company has done. No, it doesn't, but at least it is an attempt. That's more than I can say for Activision, and that is saying a lot. They apparently aren't paying attention, or I don't care that they are destroying the Call of Duty brand. Anyway, this was about companies buying positive reviews, so let's get back to that. I don't think every instance of this is the game company trying to deceive gamers. It is more likely that the companies are seeing how much more fickle gamers are becoming without really understanding why. That the tactics they are using is why gamers are becoming so skeptical and harder to please. And, they won't listen to their own employees when they try to warn them. It is a vicious cycle with one conclusion, the destruction of a franchise. The sad thing is, just like the tragedy of World War I, it could have easily been avoided. What is happening? Sir, we appear to have an intruder on board. So he's making his move. Lock all control systems. I'll deal with this personally. Acknowledge, Professor. So, this is the great ship of understanding. Now, Professor, it is time I dealt with you personally.